Hello and welcome to the Red Pitaya video tutorial number 2. For today's experiment we are going to measure the length of a desired cable. We are using this simple coaxial cable with the BNC connector and UTP cable. So, if you're thinking how are we going to measure that, we have two ways. The first one is to measure it manually with the measuring tape or with the device shown in the picture. The second one is actually to measure it with our red pitaya. But you're thinking, why red pitaya? Well, let's look at this bunch of cable. I mean, it will take time to measure all of that with the tape and lots of spinning around with the device. With our red pitaya, we can do it quick, simple and in a cool way. And how do we do that? Simply by measuring the time it takes for signal to travel down the cables and back. And by the way, this principle is used in a time domain reflectometry. To understand why the signal comes back and what amount of time is needed for that, let's look at theoretical background of transmission lines. Nothing happens instantly and nothing is perfect. This also holds for cables. All cables are essentially wires made from conductive material copper wrapped in insulation, most commonly polymers or plastic. Because of cable geometry and unideal materials, we get natural but unwanted, also called parasitic effects in the cable, resistance, inductance and capacitance. Very often we neglect these effects and look at the cable as an ideal conductor that will handle our signal with no or relatively small distortions. For direct current and low frequency signals, cables don't have any significant parasitic property apart from a very small series resistance. At high frequencies, when cable is longer than the wavelength of a signal, we must take this and other parasitic effects into account as they stop being negligible. Transmission line is a mathematical description of a cable which takes into account parasitic parameters and describes how the cable will behave in our circuit. Capacitivity and inductance are distributed uniformly down the length of the line as a long chain of differential elements. Coupled line capacitance and inductance are represented as a characteristic impedance of the cable. These markings represent serious resistance, inductance, conductance and capacitance between conductors per distance unit respectively. A signal traveling along an electrical transmission line will be partly or wholly reflected back if it encounters a discontinuity in the characteristic impedance of the line or if the far end of the line is not terminated with its characteristic impedance. Because of the losses in the line, reflected pulse has smaller amplitude than the incident one. Signal propagation speed depends on the electric between conductors. In coaxial cables, like the ones we have here, signal propagates with 66% of light speed. The incident wave traveling down the line has not any foreknowledge of what is at the end of the line and is only affected by the characteristic impedance. However, when the pulse arrives to the open circuit, at which point the current in the line is zero, no current can flow through open circuit. Since charge continues to arrive at the end of the line through the incident current, but no current is leaving the line, then conservation of electric charge requires that there must be an equal and opposite current into the end of the line. When there is a short circuit at the end of the line, the voltage must be zero since there can be no volts across a short circuit. Again, all of the energy must be reflected back up the line and the reflected voltage must be equal and opposite to the incident voltage by Kirchhoff's voltage law. Reflected and incident voltage and current are opposite direction and equal in absolute value. We can measure time between emitting signal and receiving reflected one. In that time, signal travels twice the cable distance since it travels to the end of it and back. With Red Pitaya sample rate, we can estimate the cable's length with the resolution of 80 cm. This is a bit coarse, but it can be improved as you will see in following minutes. 
Our measuring setup consists of red pitaya, a couple of thick connectors and a short cable that connects oscilloscope input and generator output. Input has 50 ohm termination so that the signal doesn't reflect at the end of that short cable. So, how are we actually doing this? We created a Python-based program that runs on your computer and communicates with Red Pitaya through Skippy commands. Red Pitaya generates a short pulse and sets up a trigger for oscilloscope that captures the signal. For pulse generation, we are using arbitrary waveform signal generation. Red Pitaya will generate the shortest pulse it's capable of, that is one sample of 1 volt, the rest signal is zero. Then we will wait for trigger event to happen and acquire signal. Our program includes two ways of measuring length. For long cables it detects incident and reflected pulse. For short cables reflection is hidden in oscillations after first pulse so it can't be detected. To get the reflection we use a clever trick. Subtract captured signal from previously saved signal, which was captured without cable attached to our measuring setup. Then we seek reflected pulse in that subtracted signal. For improved resolution at short cable measurements we use interpolation. After running it, program asks us to choose between measuring cable length or velocity factor of the cable of known length. So, let's try it out. Here we have our coaxial cables, a long one and a couple of short ones. For this experiment I've decided to start with the long one. So, let's connect it to our red pitaya. So, the program asked me if I want to measure cable length. M for measure and yes, it's measuring. Okay, so here we have it. Uh, the length of the cable is 109 meter and is terminated with open circuit. So, what if I short out other end of the cable? Here it is. Connect it. M for measuring and yes. Okay, so here we have actually the same length. Uh, the difference is that it's terminated with short circuit. As we can see here, the difference is just in a reflected pulse polarity. So see, here we have a negative reflection. If the line is terminated with its characteristic impedance, there shouldn't be any reflection. This is the 50 ohm terminator. Hello. And let's attach it on the other end of the cable. We should put this off. Okay, so let's try and measure it with the terminator attached. M, yes, and as expected, we didn't get any reflection because all energy from the signal was actually absorbed in the terminator. I don't care. Now let's see how the short cable measurement works. Let's disconnect it. Okay measurement and now we will press no because we have a short cable okay so it says no cable response because it's not saved yet okay click yes save mm -hmm. now it says disconnect cable and press enter okay uh -huh. okay so this is how it looks like Actually, this, was, this will be saved in a file, so we only have to do it once. Now I must connect the short cable again. Okay, press enter. Uh, the length of the cable is 1.19 meters long and is terminated with open circuit. Another coaxial cable, but this one is a bit longer. So I'll measure that one as well. But first I have to disconnect the shorter one. Okay, again the same procedure and for the measurement and no because our cable is shorter than 10 meters. Enter. 
Okay, this seems to be a bit unusual response, but probably has something to do with the connector attachment. Yes, the length is actually measured quite accurately. This is a UTP cable. I'm not sure how much is left in there, so we're going to measure that as well. I assume that the signal in this cable propagates with different speed. To calculate length correctly, we must first calculate the velocity factor by manually measuring the length of our reference cable. UTP cable has four of these twisted pairs. Okay, now let's go and measure it manually. And this is why we use Respitaya. Now we have to connect it and press V for velocity. Enter your reference cable length, okay, so 1.53 meters and press enter. Okay, so our velocity factor is 0 0.797. Now it's time to measure the length of a UTP cable. Okay, so let's disconnect this. And we press enter. Yes. Okay, so the length of the cable is 60.24 meters. For more information, detailed description and documentation, check the link below. It's very interesting to measure the cable length so accurately where the signals travel at two-thirds the speed of light. The main parameter for such accuracy is perfect repeatability of no cable response and signal interpolation. Now, before I start measuring, choose wisely 